In this video, we're going to talk about the first translation theorem. So first translation theorem. It's really easy to use the first translation theorem uh, once you know how to do it. <laughs> so we'll start by um, letting, so let, the Laplace transform of f of t be equal to big F of s, just for notation so I can state the theorem, okay? And then a here is a real number, so a is real. And there's two statements. The first says, say you're taking the Laplace transform of something, and you have an exponential function, like e to the 2t, e to the 3t. I'm going to use a as a variable here, so e to the at times f of t. What you can do is you can drop the exponential so it goes away, then you just get f of t. And when you do that, you do a shift, and the shift takes s to s minus a. Okay? And then if you want to be fancy and write this in the notation we have up here, it would be big F of s minus a. So basically you can drop the e and replace it with the shift. Notice that this here, once you take the Laplace transform of something, you always end up with s's. So this is a function of s. So the shift always takes place in the s space. So the shift is always with the s. Okay, you can go backwards as well, right? If you take the inverse Laplace of your result, so the shifted Laplace that you got from before, okay, you can do a shift. Now, when you do the shift, you get back to big F of s, and then you draw the line, and again, this is a function of s, so the shift always takes place with s. It's always in the s space. And then you put the bracket here. So the line is always where the s is, see? You'll see when we do examples shortly. Whenever you do this shift, it produces an exponential. So you get e to the at, f of t. This here is harder to look at than an actual example. Let's do just like two or three simple examples so you see how this works. So let's see. Say we had to find the Laplace transform of t squared times e to the 3t. Okay, so your a here is 3. So you can drop the e, so you get Laplace of t squared. Okay, and then the shift takes place in the s. So this is s to s minus 3. Beautiful stuff. The Laplace of t squared, um, you probably already know that if you're watching this video, but let me remind you, it's n factorial, and it's always one higher on the bottom. Okay, so it'd be 2 factorial over s cubed. And then the shift is from s to s minus 3. And that's equal to, see, see now you see it. The shift is with the s, because here this is a function of s. So it's 2 factorial over s minus 3 cubed, and then 2 factorial is 2, so it's really just 2 over s minus 3 cubed. Okay, and that's it. So basically, you, you drop the e, and you replace it with a shift. Okay, um, let's do another one. Let's do another, one more. Say you had um, the Laplace of, how about a trig function? I mean, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Ooh, negative, negative 2t sine 4t. So again, we have an exponential, so we can drop it. So this is the Laplace of sine 4t. And then we have the shift. The shift is on the outside because this here is a function of s. So it's from s to s plus 2 this time. Because a is negative 2 in this case, so it's s minus negative 2. So that's s plus 2. The Laplace of sine 4t, so that's like the Laplace of sine um, kt, that's k over s squared plus k squared. I memorized it like this, cosine has an s here, so sine has to have the k. Uh, kind of cheesy, but, but it works. <laughs> so this is 4, because k is 4, 
over uh, s squared plus 16. And the shift is taking s to s plus 2. Then finally, we replace all of the s's with s plus 2's. So it's 4 over s plus 2 quantity squared plus 16. So that's the answer there. So it's pretty easy. Whenever you have an e, you can drop it and replace it with a shift. Now, going backwards uh, requires some finesse. So let's look at another example. Let's start off simple. Let's take the inverse Laplace of 1 over s to the fourth. OK, <clears throat> so well, no, actually, that, let's not do that one. <laughs> we, need to have a, we need to have a shift in there already. How about 1 over s minus 2 to the fourth? There we go. <laughs> this one doesn't require the translation theorem, right? This, this one does, so it has a shift. So you see there's already a shift there, so it's kind of like you need to unshift it. So this is the inverse Laplace. So it's 1 over s to the fourth. And then we write the line, and notice the shift is with the s. s is going to s minus 2. Okay. And then now we need to add some stuff here. So I'm not sure if you remember this, but if you're taking the inverse Laplace of n factorial over s to the n plus 1, that's t to the n. And it's pretty easy to memorize. This is 1 less than the bottom. Right, so and it's a factorial. So there's a four here, so one less would be three factorial. Boom, but you can't just put it there, so you got to take it away. Right, finesse. All right, now we're good to go. So this here is one over three factorial is one over six, and then this here is going to give us t cubed, right? And then you can think of it. You can you can think of this as giving you the exponential. So a is 2, so it's going to give you an e to the 2t. So the shift, the shifting gives you the exponential. Let's do another one so it makes a little more sense maybe. How about, um, how about something like this? Inverse Laplace of, uh, what else could we do? Ooh, I know, I know. Uh, s minus, no, s plus 1 over s plus 1 squared plus 4. So in this case, we can do a shift. So it'll be s over s squared plus 4, and then we'll shift s to s plus 1. And again, notice the shift always takes place in the s space. It's always with the s. And this one has an s, and if you remember, cosine has the s, right? And the k here is 2, because 2 squared is 4. So this will be cosine of 2t times, and then this is going to give us an exponential, and it's s minus a. So a here is negative 1, because it's s minus negative 1. So it would be e to the negative t. And that's it. So hopefully that made sense. Um, that's it.